Hello and welcome to Public Speaking, Comms 131, uh, with myself, Tyler Kimbrell. I'm glad that you've chosen me as an instructor, uh, and I'm glad that you're in my course. The first thing I want to do is make sure that you need to be in my course. Uh, and so this is something that if you're a first semester freshman or, or a freshman, you probably need to take it, unless you've taking, taken speech communication somewhere else or within our department and passed for the C or better. Just a, a heads up, because then you don't need to take it. You've already fulfilled that requirement, um, and you can move on to the next thing, right? Uh, trying to get your degree in, in a timely fashion is difficult right now, uh, but I want to make sure that we're not treading water for you. Now, <clears throat> public speaking is a little different than speech communication. Uh, ordinarily, we would be in class, obviously, um, but speech communication focuses on communication theories, a lot like what uh, our first reading was about, right? What is the communication process and or processes and how do they function, right, uh, in our day-to-day -day interactions? Public speaking is a bit more uh, focused, right? And so I want to give you a little bit of information about what this course entails uh, based on our first reading. Uh, but first, I want to uh, go back a little bit to the syllabus and uh, just emphasize a few things. So a number of you have reached out to me about whether or not we're meeting uh, regularly. Uh, my plan is it's going to be an asynchronous course. We may not meet the entire semester, right? So when it comes to speech days, you'll be recording your speeches much like I'm doing right now using whatever software you can um, and sending them to me. It's, it's not ideal. Um, I prefer, obviously, in class, especially for public speaking, because a lot of our theories are going to be about dealing with speech anxiety in front of other people. Um, so we're really going to have to adjust the way that we approach this class. And I think we can do that, right? So we can look at um, more surface level theories and how communication works and then try to provide you with some strategies, right, uh, moving forward for your own communication skill set. Everybody's different, right? We all have different strengths and have different weaknesses. So we don't ignore our weaknesses, but we certainly want to cultivate our strengths. And we pay attention to our weaknesses and realize that, hey, we're, you know, human. We have weaknesses. Uh, what can we do to eliminate or make those less of an issue with our speaking? Uh, another thing is you can reach me at my email address, which you can find on the syllabus. Uh, give me 24 hours, right, um, if you want to set up a meeting. But we can always set up a meeting and have a Zoom. Um, I've had a Zoom with a couple of you already. Um, and so that's going to be an easy thing for us to do. But at least give me 24 hours in advance so that way I can make sure my schedule is clear. Textbooks. Uh, if you don't have a textbook yet, our textbook looks just like this. This is actually the teacher's edition. But you're going to want this book. Um, and it's a few years old, but the theories are still relevant, right? Uh, so some of the examples in there will be uh, a little little dated, um, but um, we can try to tie that into uh, what's going on today in our world um, as much as we can. Now, uh, another thing about textbooks, if you have not received yours yet and haven't turned in the textbook user agreement form, which you can get through our website, um, you should have gotten an email about that the other day uh, from Mona Franklin and perhaps Carrie, our librarian. Uh, you need to do that as soon as possible because they will not issue out your textbook until you've done so. So that is why we're starting a bit slower that and they extended the the ad drop and the enrollment period. Um, I just don't want people to get too far behind. But I also we have to get started. So with that said, um, we're going to try to stick to our assignment calendar as much as possible. But life is crazy right now. And sometimes things get in the way. Your job is if things are crazy for you is to communicate that to me right and we can figure that out whatever we need to do to get you through the course and get the learning outcomes uh, that we've set out now on my end right i'm going to do my best to be uh, uploading readings in the meantime until we have the textbook and also uh, i would expect or you should expect uh, about one video a week i don't want to just keep throwing videos at you and they're going to be relatively short this one is a little bit longer because i'm trying to accomplish two things um maybe even three i'm not sure but at least two but in in theory uh they're probably going to be around 10 minutes 
Some of them will be like this, where I'm just talking about stuff, and some of them I'll need a visual aid, which means I'll use a PowerPoint or something like that uh, to sort of draw out some things that, that are easier done that way. <clears throat> so um, our reading is, is a bit thorough, and it covers three different types of communication processes, right? The one that I'm most interested in and I want you to focus on is the one that's in our textbook, um, the Rothwell, practically speaking, and that is the idea that communication is a transaction. So the transactional model of communication. Now, what does this mean, right? Um, it's, it's a very important way of thinking and we've evolved to this, to, our, to this understanding, which is that when we communicate, whether it's uh, in a public speaking format where you prepared a message ahead of time and you're delivering that to an audience uh, that is there and their intention is to hear you or, or just speaking in a line to strangers, right? We know that what you're doing is trying to get across some sort of message through a channel and trying to trans and they're translating the meaning while you are trying to make that job as easy as possible for them. Some of the terms they give us are the decoder and the encoder, right? So you as a message sender, you're the encoder. You encode a message, you send it out through that channel, which is could be verbal, could be a text message, anything like that. And that decoder, their job is to decode, literally decode the message to translate it and to make meaning out of it. Now, what's important about this model is that that's only half of the equation. The other half is to complete that circle which is to say then the decoder sends feedback via another channel that lets that speaker know whether or not they understand what they're saying, right? Whether or not what they're saying angers them and whatever, right? So how do you know if someone's listening? Think about it like that. If, you, if I'm in a classroom and I'm teaching and everyone's looking up around and on their phones and, you know, walking in and out of the hallway, then chances are they're communicating to me that what I'm saying is either not important to them or what they're doing is more important, right? So that is communicating that we have a blockage of this transaction, right? So I've got to find, and this happens all the time, not just to public speaking instructors, um, where we have to really pay attention to that. So as a speaker, an encoder, <clears throat> someone that is relaying a message and trying to get it out to either an audience or just a person, whomever, right? You want to be understood, right? Everyone wants to be understood and we want to think that our ideas are good and valid and all of that, right? But we cannot do that unless that loop is closed, right? Or returned back, that feedback is given to us, right? Which means that as a decoder, um, you have a job you're communicating as well. That feedback is you communicating back to them, whether or not what they're saying makes sense, right? So I could look at you and say, hmm, and that may communicate, okay, he's interested, but he doesn't really understand what's going on. Uh, you might need to provide some more elaboration, right? That is just a very common sort of feedback loop. As an encoder, you also have to decode all of that information they're giving you, sometimes on the fly. So if people are looking like they're in a blizzard in Alaska or something like that, or a sandstorm in Arizona, and they're looking like that, either maybe your font's way too small on PowerPoint, we can worry about that later, or maybe they need additional elaboration or more information, but they're giving you feedback by doing this. Hmm. Just in the same way, if someone stops in the middle of it and gets on their phone and completely goes, oh, yeah, 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 I'm listening, right? That's feedback too, right? So this model is really the basis of our course, right? Thinking about our communication at a metacognitive level, right? And producing communication that's easily translatable. The goal of this course is not to make you the smartest person. Um, that would be untenable for, for a short semester, uh, even if we were in person. It, uh, you're not supposed to sound like the smartest person. It's not a competition against other people, right? What it is, is it's, the goal is, is about learning how you communicate and improving those skills to make your message palatable to others, right? 
um, and that way they can be uh, easily understood, right? If you've ever listened to a scientist speak, you know, if you're not a scientist like me, which I'm not, uh, it's difficult, right? They use jargon that's, that's tough to decipher, right? A lot of us are not prepared for that. Now, um, the good scientists, the good communicating scientists like Neil Tyson, right? Um, Bill Nye, the science guy, right? These are guys that made a living off of breaking down complex theories and using simple language, right? So we can communicate intelligence uh, without all those big fancy words, right? And so I want you to keep that in mind as you think about your role as, as a communicator. And as you take this information and you're looking over the reading and listen to this, um, spend time doing that. Think about the process of communication being a transaction when you're communicating, because we're always communicating, right? Almost always. Maybe not when we're asleep. Now, um, with that, I want to keep this video fairly short. If you have questions or comments uh, about the reading or the course in general, please don't hesitate to reach out to me, right? Um, you can reach me at my email address. And if you would like to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation uh, about our course, then schedule a meeting. That's fine. Um, I will ask, try to keep the, you know, late Sunday night ones to a minimum because, you know, I'll be asleep by then. Um, so kind of just what your role is at this point is you're doing the readings and you're watching these lectures and you're getting back to me if you have questions or comments, right? And as we ramp up and start to do things with this, with these readings, rather than just being theoretical, um, and building our communication skills, um, I will be able to help facilitate that, right? And we'll have some activities that we do and you can do on your own. No, ordinarily, I would like to do them in class, um, but we just can't do that right now. So um, they will be adjusted slightly, um, but hopefully it can get you out of your shell and working on your communication skills. And we all have different things we need to work on. So. Whether you come in with a lot of experience or not, I'm glad that you're in the course um, and look forward to having a, a good semester.